Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Kate. Today we're talking about crystals again. One of my favorite things in the world to talk about. This is going to be my ultimate beginner's guide to crystals. If you're interested in seeing what crystals I have in my collection or any properties that I've experienced personally, I definitely recommend you check out my latest video. It was my crystal collection video. I went over every single piece that I have. I even went into the properties of each piece. I'll have that linked in the description. I'll also put up a card right here. But Today we're discussing how I actually work with my crystals. I'll go over how to intuitively select crystals, how to cleanse them, charge them, program them, manifest with them. I went to my Instagram and asked you guys to ask me any questions that you have about crystals. I like to be really interactive with my followers. I think it's really fun. It like forms little connections. So if you want to participate in some questions or polls, definitely follow me on my Instagram. You guys ask really good questions. A lot of them already fit into the category categories that I kind of created in my head, but some of them don't, so I'll be answering the rest of those at the end of the video. I do want to say that this video is about my personal experience with crystals and how I personally use them. The great thing about spirituality or even religion is that it's very personal. If something that I say really resonates with you, I definitely recommend that you try it out. But if you hear something that I say and you're like, mm, I don't know if that's really for me, that's no big deal at all. Spirituality or anything metaphysical is very personal. It varies from person to person. I'm just sharing my experience and my processes in hopes of maybe giving you guys some ideas. Okay, we are going to start off with how to shop for crystals. I know a lot of people like to research crystal properties beforehand and kind of figure out what stone do they need at that moment. But personally for me, I like to go into a shop, like a, like a physical shop, and use my intuition and kind of feel out the shop and see what calls to me. In my experience, I found that by doing this, by using my intuition, by intuitively selecting, whatever you want to call it, I usually find a crystal that is more for me than what I had intended, like what I walked in thinking that I needed. So for beginners, I recommend you go into a physical shop, like an actual shop so you can be surrounded by all the energy and really pick up the energy of the crystal. I find that the tumbled section has the most variety. They're also kind of the easiest to work with because they're very portable. You can bring them anywhere. But yes, for beginners, I recommend you go into a shop, you go to the tumbled section, you kind of look at what they have to offer, maybe pick up anything that's really calling out to you that you're really feeling drawn to. A lot of the shops that I have gone to list the properties of each crystal on little individual cards, but I know that not every shop is like like this. In my opinion, you really don't need to know the properties of the crystal when you're buying it. Sometimes I will even buy a crystal that I just think is really pretty or I feel really drawn to and then I'll go home and research it and it actually turns out to be something that I need to work on. When selecting crystals intuitively, I feel like it's really important to actually pick up the crystal and hold it. A lot of people say that when a crystal starts to feel warm in your hand, it means that it likes you or that it's drawn to you or you're drawn to it. Even if you get a crystal that you felt drawn to at the shop and you go home and you research it and you're like, mm, that really doesn't sound like I need it right now, just give it a chance, give it a couple weeks, maybe it's something that you need in the future. But don't overthink the process, it should be fun using your intuition to select crystals, it shouldn't be very stressful. You really can't go wrong with trusting your gut and just going with what you feel in the moment when you're in the shop. I know that not everyone has access to a crystal store, so when it comes to shopping online, definitely be careful and do your research. I would definitely check out the shop before you buy from them. Make sure they have good reviews. Make sure you like the energy that you feel from the shop. I feel like shopping online is a little bit harder because you do need to know what crystal you are looking for because you can't really go in there blindly. It's a little bit harder to shop for crystals online when you don't like know what crystal name to type in. I will leave some of my favorite online shops in the description. They're very reputable. I've purchased from them multiple times. But yeah, that's how I personally select crystals. I just use my intuition and listen to my gut. It should be a very fun experience. Don't overthink it too much. The reason why you would want to cleanse your crystal is to get rid of any prior energy that is attached to it. So when I adopt a new crystal, I pretty much always cleanse it just because I want it to be free of any energy from anyone in the store, anyone that has touched it in the store. 
um, even the delivery driver, anyone. I just want it to be its energy and my energy. There are so many ways to cleanse. You could use smoke, salt, water, brown rice, but I think that the easiest way for me would have to be with selenite or sanspar. This crystal is so powerful when it comes to cleansing. So this is a sanspar selenite or selenite charging slash cleansing plate. I will literally just take crystals and place them on top. Anywhere from 15 minutes to overnight is a totally sufficient amount of time. Another one of my favorite ways to cleanse is with smoke. I don't use white sage, I don't use palo santo, but what I do use is incense. So that right there is some incense in my incense holder. Incense is made from plants and it comes in many different scents. I really like the floral scents, so like jasmine, lavender, rose, those are kind of what I'm drawn to. I'm not going to light this one right now, but basically what you would want to do is take your crystal and just draw circles around it, really smothering it with the smoke of the incense. You can also use incense around your room, so if you want to cleanse your room, you just do it the same way. If you watch my crystal collection video, You've seen my singing bowl. I use this to cleanse crystals as well as my own energy. If you don't have a singing bowl, you can still sound cleanse. I used to actually go on YouTube, search up cleansing frequencies on my phone, and just play it around my crystals, and that did cleanse them. You can also use herbs and florals to cleanse. So I get all of mine on Etsy. I will take a bowl, put lavender and mugwort in it and just bury my crystals in that, leave them overnight and they will be cleansed the next day. You can also do that same method with brown rice. I feel like that's very accessible. The only two methods that I don't really use would be water and salt and that's because it gets very technical and complicated when it comes to crystals because it varies from every single crystal. You have to take into account what minerals the crystal is made out of, um, its hardness on the Mohs scale, um, how it was formed. So if you are wanting to use salt or water, you do have to look up whether it's safe for every individual crystal that you're trying to cleanse. When it comes to how often you want to be cleansing your crystals, I think it varies from person to person. You really just want to cleanse them when they feel dull when they have taken on a lot when they've done a lot of work for you for me personally i don't really have a set amount of time that i go before cleansing my crystals it could really vary from a couple days to a month it really depends on how often i've been using the crystal how much work it's been doing for me where i've been taking it if it's been interacting with other people so cleansing your crystals is getting rid of any energies that you don't want, any prior energies, while charging your crystals is amplifying the energies that it already carries. This is kind of why people say that you should charge your crystal after you cleanse it. My favorite way, and pretty much the only way that I've ever tried to charge my crystals is with the full moon. I feel like charging them once a month is enough for me. I don't really feel the need to charge them more than that. I like to live my life by the moon. So when the moon is full, there's a lot of energy. And when it comes to me, all of my emotions, all of my energy, it's very heightened. And the moon will do the same for your crystals. In my crystal collection video, I showed you guys this box that I have. I keep pretty much all my tumbles in there. As you can see, the top is clear, which makes it perfect for charging. I will put crystals in here and then either leave them in my backyard under the full moon or under my windowsill and I feel like that is enough to charge them and amplify their energy. You could also lay your crystals out on your windowsill or even on a table anywhere in your house really that has a window so you can get that moonlight in. I think that this is the most important thing that you need to do when it comes to working with crystals and that is because crystals are multifaceted. They have a lot of properties even though some of them may be really known for like one specific property, they have a lot of healing properties. So if you want your crystal to do something specific for you, you need to tell it what to do. You have to tell it how you want it to work for you. I like to verbally speak my intentions as well as write them down. So I have a journal if I'm going to meditate with a crystal, I will hold it in my hands, my left hand, because your left hand is for receiving, your right hand is for giving. I will hold the crystal in my left hand and I will literally write something so simple in my journal. It can be anywhere from one to three sentences. So let's say I'm working with Blue Lace Agate and I want it to promote anti-anxiety, I want it to calm my emotions. I will literally write, with this Blue Lace Agate, I will blank. 
and talk about how I will be more calm or this blue lace agate will blank for me. I will also speak these sentences out loud and I will like literally talk to the crystal and I found that this has worked for me in my experience. I haven't done any really complicated programming or intention setting. I've really kept it simple and it's worked for me so I definitely recommend you try it out if you're having trouble with setting your intentions or programming your crystals. When it comes to manifesting with crystals, my favorites are citrine, pyrite, clear quartz, uh, green adventuring. Those are very like basic crystals to manifest with, but those are honestly my favorites and I've seen results with them. So I recommend those crystals if you're wanting to manifest. I'll do a very quick like 15 to 20 minute meditation. Um, you can look up guided meditations on YouTube as well if you have trouble just meditating on your own. After the meditation, I will write in my journal. I start with what I'm grateful for. I'll list everything that I'm grateful for, even if it's something that I already listed in my last journal entry, I'll write it down again. After the gratitude section in my journal, we'll move into the manifestation part and I will write what I want to accomplish, what I want to attract, what I will attract. My biggest tip when it comes to manifestation would be to add time constraints to your manifestations. So if you're wanting to attract abundance or find a new job, make sure that you say, you will be at a new job or you are at a new job in three months time. I found that adding time constraints kind of speeds up the process and lets the universe know when I need this to happen. <laughs> My favorite times to manifest are during the new moon and during the full moon. The new moon signifies new beginnings, fresh starts. During the full moon, my energy is amplified, all my emotions are heightened, I feel very powerful during the full moon. So it gives me a lot of confidence and a lot of encouragement to manifest during the full moon. Let's talk about how to actually work with crystals. So the most common way that I think people work with crystals would be meditation. Meditation really quiets your mind. It helps you connect with your crystal, especially if you're holding it while you're meditating. Like I said, there are guided meditations on YouTube that could help you out if you're having trouble with meditation. You could also use the Calm app. I think that those two are very accessible. For me, the goal of meditation has always been to quiet my mind. I also want to be put into that deep meditative state between asleep and awake. I feel like I get the most clear messages from the universe or from my spirit guides when I'm in this deep meditative state. So you could also do a lot of healing when it comes to trauma or even past life stuff. I found that meditation has really helped me connect to higher wisdom. So that's a way that you can work with crystals. Another way that you can work with crystals is to wear them. Um, I think bracelets are probably the easiest way to work with them because they're on you all the time. They're very flexible when it comes to outfits and you could even wear them under like your work clothes. If you're wanting to work with crystals when it comes to like fortifying your space, you can make a crystal grid. Um, what this does is it disperses the energy of the crystals throughout the room, the house, wherever you want. So everyone in the space can experience those energies. You can also take crystals anywhere you want. If you wear a bra, you can stick in your bra or if you have a purse, you can stick in your purse. Um, you can stick them in your pocket, whatever you need to do to carry it around with you all day. Same idea with the crystal bracelets, the more time the crystal has in contact with your aura and your energy the more time it has to work. So those are some of my favorite ways to work with crystals. Let me know what your favorite way is in the comments. As you can see, you don't have to do a deep meditation. You don't have to do deep journaling or shadow work to work with crystals. You could just have the crystals on you and that is enough for it to affect your aura and to affect your energetic field. Okay, time for the Q&A. Like I said, a lot of these questions were already answered in the previous sections that I covered, but any miscellaneous questions will be answered now. What are the best ones to start with? This is a very good question. I think that the answer does vary from person to person depending on why you're getting crystals and what you want to work on. But in general, I think that some very safe options for beginners would be rose quartz, clear quartz, 
um, amethyst, smoky quartz, and blue lace agate. Those are some of the ones that I initially started off with and I still use them today. I did go over the properties of those crystals in my last video, so definitely check it out. How to know when a powerful crystal is right for you? This is a very interesting question. I think that, like I said, you really have to use your intuition if you're being drawn to it it might be for you. Even if it's not at that exact moment, give it some time, couple weeks, couple months, it might turn out to be exactly what you needed. I'm not sure what you mean by powerful crystal. I'm assuming maybe like Moldavite because that's all the hype right now. If you're wanting change, I would recommend Moldavite or any crystal really that's very high vibrational. Even Amethyst is a very high vibe stone. But to answer your question, you will kind of just know when a crystal is for you. I know it's like not super helpful, but that is my honest answer. If you're seeing it everywhere, if you are having dreams about it, if you're just being very drawn to it, I would recommend you go ahead and get it, especially if you're having dreams about it. That one is a big one. Crystals for anxiety slash school slash work. For anxiety, I recommend anything purple. Generally, the purple color comes from lithium, uh, for example, lithium quartz and kunzite, they're both lithium bearing minerals. Medically, lithium is used to stabilize moods. So if you're experiencing anxiety, I would recommend lithium quartz or kunzite, even amethyst. I would recommend amethyst as well. For school, I recommend fluorite. I went into why I love fluorite so much in my last video. It really helps me with mental concentration. For work, I would say something that brings you confidence. So either carnelian or flower agate. How can you sense if the crystal is fake? Very good question. A lot of crystals are being faked right now just due to the hype and the demand of crystals. I think that the more you work with them, the more you familiarize yourself with them, you will start to realize what's fake and what's not. You can also do the scratch test. You can look that up on Google, but that pretty much only works for raw crystals or it works best with raw crystals. I know there are a couple accounts on TikTok and even YouTube that pretty much devote their entire account to real versus fake crystals. How to ethically shop for crystals. This question is kind of hard to answer just because the only way to know if your crystals are truly being ethically sourced is to ask the shop owner. Generally, if someone is ethically sourcing their crystals, they'll be very proud of it and they'll have pretty much no problem telling you so. But I do know that some shop owners don't really like to say yes or no because the thing about ethical work is you can't really know if your crystals are being sourced ethically unless you're there to witness it. Because to some people in some countries, the term ethical means something different. So it's a little bit difficult to know if your crystals are 100% ethically sourced by your standards, but the only way to know is to ask the shop owner. I really didn't want to go into specific properties of crystals in this video because this video is not really about like the properties, it's more about how to work with crystals in general, but this question is very good. This person asks, can a rose quartz go into the sun? Rose quartz along with some other crystals including this fluorite that I wear every day is considered photosensitive. This means that it's sensitive to the sun and can, can, might potentially fade over time. So a lot of people, they think that you can't wear rose quartz, you can't wear fluorite because you're going to be on the sun. That's not necessarily true. I have rose quartz jewelry. I also have fluorite jewelry. And I live in California, it's very sunny, and none of it has faded over the year or two that I've had it. So yes, you can go out into the sun with rose quartz, fluorite, any photosensitive mineral. But do keep in mind that probably over the course of like four to five years, if you're going out to the sun every single day and exposing it to the sun for hours on end, it will probably fade a little bit. But that doesn't mean that it's going to be clear or white just because it fades a little bit. It'll probably be just like the slightest bit paler in color, but it's not going to lose all of its color. What websites can I look up that are trustworthy? So I would actually recommend these books. These are all of the Crystal Bibles by Judy Hall. Um, these are really good for beginners or people who are wanting to learn about crystals. They do have information about how to cleanse, program, how to charge your crystals, all the stuff that I went over as well. 
but she also lists the properties and even the chemical properties of a bunch of different crystals. So these are very good beginner friendly books. They kind of serve as like an encyclopedia, but as you can see, it has pictures and it has a lot of information on different crystals. But I know that not everyone may have the funds for that. So I also recommend crystalvaults.com. This is what the website looks like. You can use the search bar to look up any crystal that you're wanting to learn about or you could scroll and look at all the crystal information that they have to offer. But yeah, either these books or this website. The last question I'm gonna answer is, do you have any crystal recommendations based on astrological placements? If you've ever been to a metaphysical shop that has crystal kits based on astrology, like Scorpio starter pack, Virgo starter pack, um, those are obviously based off of your sun sign and it's based off like the stereotypes of your sun sign. All I have to say is that when it comes to astrology, not one part of your chart is more important than another part of your chart. So to me, astrological placements when it comes to crystals is kind of like a little bit useless because they're not really taking in consideration your entire chart. Even if you look online, like crystals for Scorpios, you'll kind of get the same thing, like citrine, pyrite, based off the stereotype that Scorpios are hustlers. They attract people, they attract abundance, stuff like that. So I think rather than choosing crystals based off astrological placements, you should choose crystals based off what you need in the moment, what your energy is really being drawn to, what you feel might benefit your life at that time. Buying crystals based off astrology is fun. Like I said, I live by the moon, so whatever sign the moon is in at that time, I do purchase things based on that sign. But when it comes to your personal healing, I would say just kind of tap in with yourself and your intuition to see what you need rather than checking the internet for resources like that because it's very generalized. So that concludes my beginner's guide to crystals. I really hope that I got everything, but if I did miss something or you still have a question, definitely leave it in the comments below. I will try my best to answer it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. Please subscribe to my channel and like this video. It would help me out a lot and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.